Welcome to another episode of Old Steelhawks Workshop. A cast semi steel hammer versus a forged steel hammer. No contest. Drive a star drill through a piece of stone all day long with this thing. Won't mushroom, won't deface, it'll be fine. Now, this one, on the other hand, is only a three pound and it's made out of uh, semi steel. 3.3 pounds. The face is mushroomed. It's got a big chip out of it. Crappy handle on it too. It's made out of some kind of uh, cheap hardwood. This is a set of inexpensive body hammers. They're uh, castings also. This is cast steel. The faces on them you can tell by looking at them are all marred up and they have a fiberglass handle with a rubber grip on it. The fiberglass handle is glued into the head. This is a flattening hammer. This is a picking hammer. This is a peen. It's got a flat peen for flattening out surfaces. It's got a round ball peen for uh, depressing holes and flattening out areas in, in tight spots. Now, these aren't really hammers. This is, these are dollies. Uh, dollies are just pieces of iron that you use as a backer. Sometimes you can hammer with a dolly too. Teardrop. Some of you guys ask about my hammers. Well, these aren't all the hammers that I own, but these are all the hammers that I could gather together in one spot. I have many different types of hammers. And the reason you have different types of hammers is for different jobs. You have claw hammers. Obviously, you use this to drive nails. You've got a claw on the back so that you can pull a nail. This is a good general purpose 16 ounce hammer. Fiberglass handle, rubber grip. Bought this at Sears. It's a Craftsman, but the markings have long since gone. Uh, I really like this hammer. I know it's got a fiberglass handle, you would think that I didn't, but the weight just seems to work for me. Then there are ball peen hammers. Why is it called a ball peen hammer? Because it has a ball shaped peen on the end. Used for striking to stretch metal. Flat face can be used to flatten metal, but these are more machinist hammers. They're not really tinner's hammers. Uh, blacksmith uses them because they're everywhere. They come in a variety of sizes. This is a three pound. This is a two pound. Mostly the difference is the material thickness. Got a larger head on it, a little heavier. Then you got a one pound. And down to a 12 ounce. A little 12 ounce hammer is, is nice for tapping things into position and people think that they should use this for light work. When you're trying to assemble something, tapping with a three pound hammer, you can control the tap a lot more because the inertia allows you to just tunk it. You don't have to swing at it. Trying to move something the same distance with this little hammer, you really got to hit it pretty hard. This one, just moving it and letting it stop, does a much better job. Then there's cross peen hammers. Now this little cross peen hammer, you would think, oh, that's a little tinner's hammer. No, nope, it's for driving nails. Put a nail between your thumb and your finger, and you can drive that nail right between your thumb and your finger without hitting either one. 
this is a handy thing to have. Now this is a ripping hammer. Straight claw, not as much curvature. This is slightly heavier, heavier, it's about a 20 ounce hammer. This is an old-fashioned framing hammer. This is a full two pounds. Now the handle on this one's pretty hammered up, but I really don't use a framing hammer that much, and this is so old and so cool. I decided to leave the handle in it like it was. I don't use it for driving nails. This is just for looking at. Then there's the kind of regular old wooden handled claw hammer that you find in everybody's kitchen drawer or back shop. Why would you want a wooden handle hammer? Well, they feel good. Now, I just told you that I like the fiberglass handle on my Craftsman. The thing I like about a wooden handled hammer, all the weight's in the head. When you swing that, the weight is in the head. So as you accelerate that head, it'll drive a nail all day long. They're not as good for pulling nails though. The wooden handle is not as well attached as this fiberglass one. Fiberglass one's bonded in, glued in place, anchored very well. I've had this for over 30 years and it still works fine. Wooden handle hammers, these come in junk boxes. I go to auctions and I buy boxes of junk and I almost always come home with a hammer because nearly everybody has one. Then, how many claw hammers do you need? Well, there's different styles. See the, see the difference in shape between them. this one with the neck down head and this one with the full size head all the way through. This is a much older hammer. These are of a similar age group. The markings are long since gone. I couldn't tell you who made either one, but they're just very cool hammers. Then you get into specialized hammers. This hammer's a tack hammer. Whereas this one uses configuration to make it so you can drive a nail. This one has a magnetic end on it. You fix the tack to the end of the hammer, start it, flip it over, and drive it home with the head. I have two. It's one of those things. I like them. Both of them have a magnetic head. That's why this is split. It forms two poles. Both of these are peening hammers. This is a cross peen hammer. It's used for stretching material, and this one was made. It was uh, somebody took a regular sledgehammer and forged it down to put a point on the end of it. This one used to look very similar to this one, but then somebody put it in the fire, heated it up, forged it down. So when you hit a piece of material with this, the force goes in a vertical line, in line with the handle, and causes the material to spread. So I can take a straight piece of steel, heat it up, and hit it like that and make it grow longer. Or I can lay it down like this, hit it like that, and make it grow wider. 
when you hit with a round hammer, like that, the material spreads out in all directions. This type of hammer allows you to control the direction. Then this one is a tinner's hammer. You don't do a whole lot of heavy duty banging with it. It's more for getting into corners to define shapes. You want to put a fold and go down in the corner and seal the seam. This is your tool. Now this looks very similar to the cross beam. Looks like a badly made hammer. This really isn't a hammer. This is a hot chisel. You get a piece of metal hot, lay the chisel on top, take a heavy hammer and strike it. This handle that's in there is just in there enough to hold it so that you don't hit your fingers. When somebody's wailing on this with a sledgehammer, having that extra foot makes all the difference in the world. What's the difference between these two? This one is just a little bit heavier. And this one is also just a little bit longer in the peen. So it can get into tighter corners. And it allows you to reach over to the top of something and reach in and do some hammering. This shorter nose, somebody needed one like this. This one, I got this one special. It's a brick layers hammer. This chisel point allows you to score a brick and then strike it and break it in half. Also allows you to chip off corners on cement blocks and, and just kind of get in there and shape things the way you want them. This is just a cool hammer. It's an east wing. Very expensive, rubber handle, steel neck, wrecks your wrist. Pounding with this thing for very long, all that vibration goes right through that steel and even though it's got a rubber handle, it goes right into your wrist. It makes your elbow hurt. A little brass hammer. Kind of like the uh, body hammers in shape and configuration, same kind of company. Fiberglass handle, fiberglass neck, rubber handle, brass head. Now the brass head is nice when you're driving on something that's finished and you don't want to make a big dent in it. But the brass head gets dented. So when you're using a brass hammer, you have to keep smoothing off the surface. Not just something that you wail on things. This is a copper hammer. Copper is not as dense as brass, not as strong. This is more malleable, so it doesn't dent as easily, but it holds its shape fairly well. Especially compared to a lead hammer. Lead hammer, a lot heavier. For one thing, there's a lot more lead on this, but lead is denser than copper. And it's funny because you can mix copper and lead together and come up with bronze, form of bronze, which is harder than either lead or copper. But a lead hammer is nice for tunking things into position. Now this one, this one came out of a junk box, needs to be reshaped. Nice thing about a lead hammer, once you've beaten the thing to pieces, you take the pieces, melt them down, cast a new head, and you're back in business. This one is a worn out plastic tipped hammer. It has a steel body, plastic heads that pop onto either side, and I could buy new plastic heads, but I don't use it very much, and the head's still enough there to do the work that I do with it. This is a rawhide mallet. Now rawhide mallets are nice because even better than lead, copper, or brass, they don't do any damage to a polished surface. 
you can hit quite hard on a piece of steel because the leather doesn't uh, deface the surface. It doesn't weigh much. You really got to get some movement on this thing to make something move. But it's really nice for assembling. These things did a lot of work with this kind of hammer and die work because with a hardened steel die piece, you really didn't want to crack at it with a hardened steel hammer because you'll chip off pieces. You can tunk it into place with a lead hammer, tap it into place with a copper. You can even drive hardened pins with a brass hammer, although I use a punch most times. Rawhide mallet, nice thing to have. Now these two things, some people say, well, that's not even a hammer. Well, actually it is. This is a lathing hammer. It's an OBB, our very best lathing hammer. And it's got a little nail puller, and it's got a hammer head, but it also has this hatchet blade on it. I could take a piece of lath. When they were putting in lath, they would take a, a piece of lath, put it up onto the wall, nail it in place, and anchor it. If they needed to pull a nail, they pull it with a little clevis here. If they needed to trim the lath, rather than getting a saw down and trying to make the size to shape, they would just take the hatchet, chop off the end, cut it to length, and put it up on the wall. Lath didn't have to be straight, square, perfect because you were going to cover it over with plaster. All that needed to be there was solidly in place, covering most of the major gaps so it provided a structure for the plaster to hook onto. This is a shingling hammer. Those split cedar shingles. This originally had a pin that went in these three holes, one of these three holes. The pin has gotten lost. You would use that to set how far in the shingle went. Set the shingle on top of the, the roof, slide this hammer up in, the, the pin would go up and you'd use that to measure how much offset you had on the shingle. Then it had this knurled head so that when you drove the nails in, you could get a good strike and put them right on down into place. And you use this hatchet to split the shingle for width. This one is for driving on chisels. It was an early practice piece on a lathe and it worked well enough that I kept it, but the handle is split, so if you hit anything very hard with it, it stinks. This isn't a mallet, this is a rammer. It's kind of a handheld hammer. When you're making molds, you use this to compact the sand inside of a green sand mold or an oil sand mold for that reason that matter. You use the narrow tip to go around the outside of the pattern and tamp the sand into place and then you go over the top of it with the larger round butt and just smooth it off before you struck off the top of the mold. Then I just recently got this one. Came in a box of stuff. Cool mallet though. Nice shape, nice heft. I do have a few sledgehammers. Didn't bring them all down, they're kind of heavy. Representative sample, this is an eight pounder. Nice size for uh, most jobs. It's enough that you can swing it and really do some work with it, but it doesn't wear you out over the day's time. This one came home from a garage sale with a crappy hardware store handle on it that's been painted and I'm going to try cleaning off the paint from the handle and get some boiled linseed oil so it's a little bit easier on your hands. Right now when you go to slide your hand up and down the paint, the paint comes off in your hand and the edges are all sharp. This is a 10 pound sledge. True temper, we 
which means it's a pretty good sledgehammer, but somebody put the handle in wrong. Sledgehammers have a tapered eye, and the idea is that you put the handle in from the narrow part, and then when you drive the wedges in, the uh, wedges spread the handle into the wider part and cause the head to be locked on. That's what this one had done. The true temper. The writing of the true temper stamped in there, that tells me that this hammer head is on there upside down. So it needs to have a new handle. This one, the handle is put on in the correct direction, but somebody thought it would be cool to cut it off. This sledgehammer, which is a Japanese-made hammer, it appears to be fairly good because the head's not all peened up. Looks like somebody's been smacking things with it. Hadn't got chewed up too bad. Appears to be drop forged. It says drop forged Japan. Warning wear safety goggles. So I'm thinking it's a fairly new series of hammer. Put the handle in the right direction, but they put it in this short little handle. Now maybe they had a really tight spot they had to work in, and it was something that they needed to do to get the job done. I don't know, but for me, a handle this short, I'm not going to use this to drive nails. I'm not going to use this as a short swing hammer. Ten pounder—that's something you wail on things with. That's for really being serious. I need a full-length handle something that I can hold on to and strike. So I really need to replace the handle on all three of these. Then I'll have two 10 pounders and an 8 pounder along with whatever else I got out there in the barn that I didn't bring in. So this is a cross section of the hammers that I own. It's not all of them. It's a representative sample. But you guys asked to see them, and here they are. Now, if anybody else has any other questions or suggestions for a new video or something that you'd like to see done, or if you have any questions about today's video or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. I read them all, you know. Thanks for watching. Imagine trying to hold this up and do anything with it.